here for the post show here at Supreme Pro Wrestling. What an August event that we had. I'm Alan Sanchez here, joined by a J, a Junior Bruce. Uh, now, uh, we saw JR. You can Kratos. call me JR Kratos can, if you want. Sure. Well, you can I'll, call I'll, me also. I don't. I can't. I can't pull it off. But I'll gladly attempt to wear it here. We were just. We just had a great matchup. But let's quickly go down the lineup here. Starting off. Uh, we had uh, the Freaks uh, take on uh, the Honor Society. Now, it was a three-on-two situation. If you include Chatterbox on the outside, it was it a... It was a four-on-two. A four-on-two yeah. situation for... I can do math. For a long time. Uh, and uh, Samurai and Frost just decided, let's start this matchup. They weren't even really in their wrestling gear. They wanted to get straight into it. And then later, Scoot Robinson or um, was it Scoot Foley? Uh, Mrs. Robertson's Robertson's baby boy, the hardcore legend Scoot Foley. Talk about that matchup. I mean, it was pretty intense. It was great. It was uh, fantastic. I mean, we've seen a lot go on between the Freaks and the Honor Society. You know, we learned tonight that the Freaks, they they just want they want to be in on the fun, and they see the Honor Society being the the purveyors of fun, if you will, and they they want to be the purveyors of fun. So they're going to come out there and they're going to take it to the guys who they think are, are, are taking the fun away from right. them. Right, and they, they did. I mean, they figured out a win in, in the Freaks, and they won with the help of Chatterbox, kind of sacrificing himself. Uh, and then we go quickly into the next matchup, uh, Joe DeSoul taking on a JMM. Now, Joe DeSoul, you talked to him, and he was kind of complaining that he should have been the number one contender for the uh, for the SPW Extreme title. He should have been. I, I, I honestly think he should have been. I mean, he had an incredible match last month against Marcus Lewis, who did go on to have uh, the title shot this month, uh, which unfortunately he wasn't able to pull off uh, due to a post-concussion syndrome. Right. Um, but no, he came out here, and I think he made a statement. He made a statement against JMM, and uh, he proved that he should be in the mix, without a doubt. And uh, he, well, he and he won, like you said, he won uh, the matchup. Um, we're also going to match number three. That saw uh, the beautiful people. And with Rick Luxury Corvus and Big Ben Johnson taking on uh, Carl Fredrickson, which I'm very impressed by. James Von Erie and Christina Von Erie. And Christina Von Erie with the win puts her in the number one contendership. Uh, talk about her performance. Well, it was a six-man tag. Caveat being whoever gets the pinfall victory gets the shot at the X title next month. Uh, Christina Von Erie came out, and she proved that you know, she can hang with the guys uh, like anybody else. I mean, it's amazing when you think about She's come out here now for a couple of months. She's been here before. Uh, she is a champion in her own right elsewhere. You know, she's a serious threat. She's a badass. And nobody questions uh, why a woman is in a match with other men when she's involved. Uh, that, and I think that speaks volumes that's for her. A, that is, that's the best way to put it. It's a great point. And right, we go to match number four. One of my favorite matches was Ryan McQueen taking on Jeff Cobb. We saw things that we have never seen in wrestling before. And you and I have been watching her pretty much our entire lives. And we saw things in that matchup that were just incredible. Yeah, there, there's stuff I can't even name. Like, there are things that divide, like, logic, right. gravity, physics. I can't even begin to explain what we saw uh, throughout that match. But what I can say is that it was athletic. It was amazing. And it's definitely, it was worth the price of admission alone. Right. In, in my not-so-humble opinion. Uh, definitely. It was great. Jeff Cobb with the big win. One thing, one thing to note, too, Ryan McQueen, close ties to Adam Thornstow, a man that Cobb has been fighting last couple of months. Talking about Adam Thornstow, he was the next matchup after that. He taking on Aaron Sky. And, now again, we both were talking about that in the matchup. Oh, it didn't look like Aaron Sky had that much of a chance. But Aaron really brought it, even though Adam came up a victorious in this matchup. He really show, impressed us, really showed what he could do. Last month, Aaron Skye showed us all kinds of heart, guts, determination uh, when he fought Ryan McQueen. Tonight, he goes up against Ryan McQueen's teacher, Adam Thornstow, and nobody thought he had a prayer right. in hell. But that kid came out, he fought his ass off, and uh, can I say ass on this? Sure, why not? I just did twice. Yeah. You know, but hey, there's no other way to say it. Right. The kid put in the work, learned a lot, didn't get the win, but he won the respect of a lot of people here at SPW Arena tonight. Match number six, you saw Daniel Torch taking on Harry, Hip Hop Harry, and Michael Hayashi for the SPW Extreme Title Champion. Michael Hayashi was said, bring all competitors. Uh, it was a controversy at the start, whether it was going to be Daniel Torch or Hip Hop Harry with, 
with uh, our management. And then uh, at the last minute, we saw Virgil Flynn be thrown in there. First time we saw both Virgil Flynn and Daniel Torch really have a chance to go at it after the craziness that they've been through and somehow Michael Hayashi able to retain that title. Listen, the tag team, the, the fan favorite tag team that was Salt and Pimpin is clearly no more. Daniel Torch, Virgil Flynn, opposite ends of the spectrum with the way they want to get things done. Torch clearly wants to make a name for himself outside of what he perceives to be the shadow of Virgil Flynn. And it, that, that intensity, that rivalry between the two of them really did seem to impede on the match, which, surprisingly enough, after Hayashi managed to eke out a victory, uh, called attention to in a post-match uh, promo. Yeah, and, and he all but apologized to the fans, and he, and he said next month, He's going to step it up. He's going to bring it even harder. Yeah, and he's going to have that opponent being against uh, uh, Christina Von Erie. The main event saw five men, five very big, large men, go at it in an elimination for the SPW Heavyweight Championship. And somehow, some way, J.R. Kratos able to come away still champion. I mean, we saw a battle with all five men. The Kratos era continues. Uh, it's not going to end tonight. I don't know when we're going to see it end. I'm thinking maybe not uh, not anytime soon. The man is at the peak of physical conditioning, attitude, confidence. He, he's got the world on his shoulders, and he's carrying the load. Uh, super impressive. I'm really surprised that the ring is still standing, to it, be honest. It was an incredible night. We come back here every third Sunday. I believe it's September 20th is when we get back here, and uh, we heard it. It's going to be the rematch. Number three, it's going to be Cobb Thornstone 3, and it's ex I'm. This is a, I mean, this is a matchup you definitely don't want to miss. You want to be there in person so you can say you saw history in the making. These are men who are making their names across the wrestling world, and you can see them right here at Supreme Pro Wrestling. I'm Alan Sanchez, joined here always by Junior Bruce. We will see you next month.